Thanks everyone uh, for making time to have a listen to this um, uh, presentation. Unfortunately we had some technical problems earlier on when Steve and I were presenting on the live stream so we've decided to just do the presentation again just so that people get the sense of what we're talking about um, face to face as much as we can. So where to start? Um, uh, so what I want to talk about today is uh, a proposed change in the executive structure across CFA. Um, that's really being driven by our need to get ourselves organised and aligned in terms of new accountability arrangements. So I want to talk about that. I um, uh, can also say that we will send out the structure and some information about it in the next hour or so after I've finished this presentation. So starting at the top, the board met on uh, Monday this week. Um, and the board's been doing a piece of work on their own governance arrangements and we've had an external consultant, Nicola, working with the board on establishing its operating arrangements. So how is the board going to function? Making sure that the board's operating at the right level in terms of governance and strategy and stewardship uh, and leaving management to management. Uh, the board's also um, determined on Monday its new committee structures um, and I guess part of all of that work in terms of the governance arrangements for the board meant that I had to turn around and along with Steve and the rest of the executive go, well, what, how do we need to organise ourselves to help support the board and to help support the front line? And so that's the piece of work that we've done that I want to talk about today. In terms of process, uh, so I'm talking about it today, we'll release some information today and then we've got the next two weeks as a consultation period. So that's where teams get to talk to their managers, managers talk to other managers, people talk to HR, everybody has a bit of an input into what this looks like because from where I sit I've got a view about what people are doing but actually when you get down a few layers in the organisation someone's position description might look like something but actually they're doing something else. So we're interested in people's views about where they fit in the structure, we've got a, we've got a starting position but we really want to have input from people. Um, we're also consulting with Union, of course, we have consulted with the Joint Consultative Committee um, a, a little while ago, and we will be doing all of that consultation. So today is putting the structure on the table, two weeks to consult and chat about it, and then we will aim for an implementation on October 10. I'm sure we haven't got everything right, so I'm kind of seeking forgiveness in case we've got a few things um, wrong, but we really want to get going with this um, change. So in terms of the actual change, what I'll do is I'll talk through the executive side and Steve will talk through the um, fire and emergency management side um, and uh, hopefully that will give you a picture of what it looks like um, and what we're planning on. And, and Steve can talk a little bit more about what's the motivation behind doing it. So, um, starting at the top, I guess, um, I am changing um, some of the direct reports to me um, which are um, uh, the Director of Communications, Lydia Ivanovsky, is the new Director of Communications and um, she's going to report directly to me, as well as Bruce Russell, our Legal Counsel, will report directly to me. It's not unusual to have um, that arrangement, to have Legal Counsel and Comms report directly to a Chief Executive Officer um, and that's really because they provide quite a lot of support to my office and support the rest of the organisation. So um, Bruce and Lydia will report to me uh, with their teams. Um, people and Culture, Zamil Saba, who's been here maybe uh, 14 weeks now. Um, Zamil, uh, who is a power of energy. Um, Zamil is going to retain pretty much all the same responsibilities within People and Culture, um, with some work on uh, really thinking about and planning for um, a new model of HR delivery into the field. So whenever I go out to regions and districts, people tell me how many thousands of people are working out there and we need to make sure we've got the right HR support out there. So Samil retains all of her functions within um, people and culture, but is thinking about a new HR service delivery model that's a little bit more distributed um, into the regions and districts. I mean, she does pick up a, a piece of work, which is the honours and awards work that was previously sitting within the uh, learning and volunteerism group. Uh, so those honours and awards, people will move over into people and culture. We've talked with the team. I should say we've talked to the teams that are directly affected by this. Um, and that team will join people and culture because honours and awards is really about um, people and culture. So that's the um, people and culture team. Um, Anthony Ramsey, the um, Executive Director of Infrastructure Services, who joined us maybe five or six weeks ago from VicPol. Um, Anthony retains his um, existing functions, not much change there except he's going to pick up the um, 
uh, there was a few staff within the Learning and Volunteerism Directorate that had responsibility for um, infrastructure services at regional training campuses. So there's a few people there that will move over and um, Anthony will retain responsibility for all infrastructure services, whether it's operational or the training campuses. Um, the next one is Nigel McCormack. Nigel is our Chief Finance Officer. Nigel is also going to d report directly to me. Um, it's also not unusual in an organisation to have the CFO report directly to the CEO. Um, we have a half a billion dollar budget, it's a big piece of work, there's quite a lot of um, responsibilities wrapped up in that role and I'm keen to elevate Nigel to be um, on the executive team um, and, and really utilise Nigel's skills um, to really help us um, sort through some sustainability issues um, into the future. Um, so the last group, probably it is the most significant change, is we're creating a new directorate um, that's called Volunteerism, no, it's called Volunteers and Strategy. Um, that directorate will be led by John Haynes, um, and that directorate's really formed out of a combination of John Haynes' existing team that sits within fire and emergency management, and the balance of the team in business planning and strategy. So if I take finance out of business planning and strategy, the, the bits that are left behind, which are quite important functions around corporate planning and strategy, um, they will be combined with John Haynes' team, and that will form one team called Volunteers and Strategy. Um, so that's, a, that's probably the most significant change in some ways, uh, the creation of that new team, and that's really about making sure we've got a single focus, one place in the organisation that's doing all of the kind of thinking work, the strategy, the innovation, business intelligence, business excellence, you know, those sorts of functions. So John and Phil have been talking to their um, teams and people are pretty well advanced on, on the thinking about how that might work. Um, so that's, oh, and I should say the volunteerism team that sat in learning and volunteerism moves over into the John Haynes team. So a single point in the organisation that can do the leadership work around volunteers. So I'm pretty uh, keen on that. I think that provides us with some pretty good opportunities into the future. And there's also some changes, um, obviously they flow on into the um, f and &E because we've, uh, I guess, effectively disbanded the learning and volunteerism group, but maybe I'll hand over to Steve to talk about those changes. Thanks Francis. So one of the, ex the exciting things for me is the driver of this is not about dollars, it is about a more effective, efficient organisation with clearer accountabilities and less duplication. And so just as Francis has talked about, there's duplications in, you know, we've got, we had and still have two volunteerism teams or two, two business strategy sections within the organisations. We've got duplication in diversity, duplication in leadership. To, there's an opportunity to bring that together. We've used the same principle in environments and management. I think you'll be uh, really excited about some of the things we're about to uh, let you know about. One of those is, and it, while there'll be a DCO um, bushfire, uh, it's, it's not about the DCO position, it is about the centre of excellence for, for bushfire. And the example I use here is if you, if you spoke to the, the Joe Citizen in the street, or, or Mary Citizen in the street, then, then I think they would see CFAs predominantly as a bushfire organisation, they would see yellow, they would see volunteers that come out during summer. Um, and so when you looked at CFA, uh, the pieces of bushfire sit right across a number of different port portfolios. It's about bringing all those together and having the people that do the, the, the burns programs, the people that do the uh, preparedness, the bushfire in that bush, treat that as grass fire in the one location. The other side of that, and I just said it before, is the perception of people of our organisation is very much bushfire, when the reality is we're one of the biggest urban fire services in the country. And particularly with now 35 integrated stations, we have some big volunteer urban stations as well. The reality is we need to mature, I think, a lot more into the urban space. And as such, there'll be a portfolio led by a DCO called Urban. So DCO Urban, with all the urban uh, in that, and uh, people that, that, that are, you know, technical rescue people, fire investigator, all in that one uh, particular team too, which I think is quite exciting. The third element for us is about safety of our people and, and real-time service delivery. So it's called safety service delivery. Um, and that'll be led by DCO Bruce, Bruce Fyatt, um, and that will be um, being ready to go uh, with management team level, whether it be um, trucks, whether it be uh, someone that's going to deliver a, a message into the community on any given day. So that's about safety and service delivery. Community safety, now that's led by Terry. Ter Terry's obviously already advised us that he intends to for go that position 
uh, in the next couple of weeks. So we'll put out an expression, in fact, we've already put out an expression of interest to replace that. Um, and essentially, we still see uh, community safety as primary service delivery, just as much as uh, we take a, a truck out the door or put wet stuff on red stuff. We, uh, we, we empower and make our communities more resilient before and during the fire. So really key port, part of service delivery for us is community safety. So we reckon we've got that right and we're going to um, reinforce that position. Uh, there's, there's a couple more new ones though. There's one uh, to do with uh, the, the, the industrial relations, to do with uh, growth programs in the organisation as well. We're, we're a, an organisation that is really, really growing and, and you'll see that um, I'm sure and we think we've under-resourced that. So if we're bringing in uh, more career firefighter positions, for instance, we need to recruit them, develop them, put them on courses, make sure that they, there is consistency in how we manage and train and operate our, our, uh, our, our in-grade stations and our urban volunteer stations as well. But, uh, and, and of course, um, making sure that we're well prepared in any industrial matters. So, so they, they will be a team quite succinct, we reckon for about at least about six years. I think the important one for me, and the reason I get so excited here, is a is a training, a design and delivery portfolio. So we and Francis talked to you about before about we'll take um, some of the add-ons in learning and, and volunteerism out, the volunteerism bit, uh, some of the infrastructure, and I think there's a couple of bit, and really focus on design and delivery of training. So we'll go for an expression of interest for DCO training, um, uh, and, and and that then if you put that all together. That allows us to go to the urban people. What are your capability requirements, urban? How many pump operators, how many truck drivers, how many water squirters, BA weathers, technical rescue people, and turn around a training and eyeball them in the same team and say, and this is what we, we want you to deliver. Okay, bushfire, how many strike team leaders? What's the standard of your strike team leaders? Let's go to our volunteer ranks and say, well, who's the best strike team leaders? How can you tell us what should be in the strike team leaders? And go to training, and this is what we expect. This is what we require in instant manage. So that real sense of connectivity, I think. And then if you pulled all that together, our ability with uh, John Haynes and the strategic planning team, we're the service deliverers, uh, they'll help do all the data collection that will make us, allow us to make some informed decisions about the future, that we're really well connected in infrastructure. So if we need a particular truck that is a crew cab, it's got a tanker design, etc., then they're able to deliver it for us. Um, the people uh, connection, for us that uh, they will help deliver that. So if you start to think about that, clear lines of accountabilities, joint, single, joint teams joined up delivering the same thing, I think it's a real exciting opportunity for our, our future as an organisation. Great. Thanks, so probably the last thing I'd say is there's just a few people I should acknowledge um, because when I came into this organisation there were quite a lot of acting executive directors. So uh, Phil Harbert um, has been acting executive director, done a great job and he's now going to take up a leadership position within John Haynes' team. Um, people might know that Emma Tyner has um, decided has been acting in the communications role, providing support through a pretty um, busy time, I have to say. Uh, and Emma is now moving on to um, back to the energy sector. And um, Kate Harrop, um, after a period of leave, is um, going to return to her manager volunteerism position. So um, I should acknowledge the work of those three people who have been acting in those roles for really quite extended periods of time. I'm particularly pleased that we now have a permanent executive. Um, so all of the executives are now permanent um, and I think that's, uh, that's a good thing for the organisation and now we need to kind of line ourselves up behind those people um, and make sure we deliver on the stuff that we actually want to do. Um, and probably the last thing to say is change always makes people anxious um, and it doesn't matter how much change you've had. I know CFA has had lots of change and people might go, oh look, it's just another change, you know, whatever. Um, it does affect people and so I think it's really worthwhile just and it will affect people in ways that you don't expect. And, and whilst it's like, you know, not ideal to announce this on a Friday, I would have much rather done it earlier. You know, things happen that meant I couldn't do that. Um, so I do really want you to think about, um, it is change, change makes people anxious. People need to make sure that each other's okay. And if you've got any concerns, talk to your manager, talk to HR, seek advice from the um, Employee Assistance Programme. But in the end, I think actually um, the feedback that I'm getting uh, around the organisation is people are keen to do this. Um, it's probably been the worst kept secret in CFA. We're not very good at secrets in CFA, and that's probably not a bad thing because it's been meant I've been able to sort of test what people think about it. Um, so, uh, you know, it's the worst kept secret, but I think people want us to get on with it. We don't want to drag this out for a long period of time. We want to do it pretty quickly. 
Um, so we might make a few mistakes on the way, so I'll seek your forgiveness in advance, but really um, we're keen to, to get on with it. And I think it's actually going to be a good thing for the organisation. So thanks very much for listening, and um, please get in touch with your manager if you've got any questions. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks.